Hi, I'm Dave Cross. Welcome to this class, Photoshop for Photographers. I've been teaching Photoshop, well, pretty much since the day it came out and at first for pre-press and print and then eventually for photographers. And no matter what the version of Photoshop, there's been a common theme that's a challenge for people and that is there's so much in Photoshop to learn, how will I ever learn it? And my purpose in this course is to show you the key things you need to know. We're not going to cover everything. There are other classes including a Photoshop Essentials class that go into more detail about all kinds of things. I'm going to show you the things that I think are the most important for you to know about Photoshop to get up to speed quickly and get the things achieved that you want. Along the way, we'll look at some what I would call good work habits which means even if you're exploring a tool you've never used before, you'll do it in such a way that it's easy for you to experiment and try things knowing you have the option of changing your mind. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about what you should expect when you're first working with Photoshop. And to do that, I'm going to have a little slideshow accompanying what I'm saying here. One of the things I talk about a lot in my introductory classes for photographers is we need to set our expectations of what we can and can't do in Photoshop and what we can and can't learn in Photoshop and those expectations have to be realistic expectations. Unfortunately, there are a lot of cases where someone takes a photograph that's just really bad and they say, just fix it in Photoshop and it's blurry and it's overexposed and could you maybe do something with that in Photoshop? Yes, to a degree, but like Anything else in life used to be, many years ago people would talk about photocopying and saying if you photocopy a bad original, you'll get a bad copy. This is kind of the same thing. If you have a bad original, there's only so much that Photoshop can do. The bottom line is Photoshop is not magic. Even though in the movies they make it look like it is, it really isn't. So that's the first thing is we have to have realistic expectations about what Photoshop can and cannot do. Ideally as photographers, we're going to get it either right in the camera or as I like to say as right as you can in the camera based on the photographic circumstances and then use Photoshop to enhance and build on that. Now one of the other things we need to set our expectations are is about Photoshop in general and what you need to expect when it comes to learning Photoshop. Here's the thing. Photoshop has 64 tools, there's 28 panels and nine menus with over 600 options. So the question is how on earth will we ever be able to learn all those things? And the answer is you won't and nor do you need to because as much as all those tools are there, we use a small core of those on a regular basis. So please don't go into Photoshop expecting to learn every single aspect of it. I always say that the only reason you need to learn everything about Photoshop is if you intend to teach it because then it's important to know at least what everything does. I teach Photoshop for a living but there are a lot of tools that I never use because I don't need to. They're just, they're there but that doesn't mean they're necessary to learn. Take a look at this picture. I've taken every single tool in Photoshop and exploded it out and see, wow, that's kind of overwhelming how many tools there are. But honestly, on a day-to-day -day basis, I use a very small subset. Now if you look really closely, you'll see some tools are kind of gray, which means I use them occasionally, but others I hardly use at all. And even here within this group, there's probably a subset of that that I use on a regular basis. So what we really want to talk about for now is this idea is that in this class, we're not going to go through every single tool and every single menu because you don't need to know that. We're going to talk about the key tools and functions you need to know and also as I mentioned these kind of what I would call good work habits and ways of setting up our document so if you do decide to experiment you know you can change your mind and re-edit and reuse and all those good things. So let's look at, at an example of something that I like to talk about a little bit and that's uh, permission to experiment. When you're first learning Photoshop and you're trying things we'll talk in later lessons about uh, working non-destructively but Part of that concept means giving us a chance to try things. So for example, let's just, I'm actually going to open a different document just for the sake of what I want to show you here. So here's a document, let's just say for the sake of argument that I want to try something I've never done before. So we'll talk later on about whether you should or not, should not use these functions under this menu. but. Here's an example of something in Photoshop. It's kind of overwhelming. You look at it and go, gosh, I have no idea how this works. Well, look over on the side here. You'll see there's a preview checkbox and a cancel button. 
Those are the two things that I like to call permission to experiment because until you click OK, you haven't actually committed your work at all. And you can turn that preview on and off to see what is this actually doing. So it's a great way to try things. Later on, we'll talk about alternative to this kind of dialog box where it's even better because there isn't an OK button, which is even better in the sense that you can continually experiment and try things. But back to this example, let's just say, well, I'll just click and drag on this and see what happens. And all of a sudden, I'm creating something crazy that I don't like. Preview is going to show me the original. Cancel would let me say, you know what, that didn't work at all. Now, there is a third option. And we're going to talk in lots of detail about all these things. At this point, I'm just sort of talking about overall how we need to approach things. If you're working in some dialog box and you've gone down some road and you're like, this just isn't working at all and you want to start all over again, the cancel button will actually close out of this dialog box. If you hold down Option on the Mac or Alt for Windows, it changes to Reset and that just lets you start over again. So that's a nice little trick. It's a great way to feel confident in trying something because you know you're never going to be painted into a corner where you go, oh no, now I've really messed things up because I can't change my mind. That's one of the key things we're going to talk about throughout this course is how to do things in a way that's very efficient and very effective, but also part of its effectiveness is the ability to change your mind and reuse it in other ways. Now, as I mentioned, there are some things that Photoshop can and cannot do. As a photographer, you have the benefit where as you're capturing the image, you have some control over that. The biggest challenge for many of us who use Photoshop is when someone else hands us an image and does that whole just fix this and they send a little postage stamp JPEG from a website and want to make it into a poster. Well, that just won't happen. There are just certain things that Photoshop can't do. Technically, could you make that image bigger? Yes, you could. Would it improve the quality or even hold the same quality? Not at all. So there are certain things that as a photographer we need to think about. When we're capturing a file, I would suggest capture it as big as you possibly can. You can always make it smaller, but you can't make it bigger. We're going to talk throughout this class about uh, Camera Raw and Lightroom, and I highly recommend using Raw as your main mode of capture, although JPEG will be fine in certain circumstances. But as we'll see throughout the ongoing lessons, using Camera Raw as your starting point gives you a wealth of opportunities to try different things. So my intention in this first session was just to kind of get us started to say this is what our expectations should be. So please don't go in with the expectations of learning every menu and every tool because honestly you don't need to. We'll talk about core functions, we'll talk about key ways of working, we'll talk about the things like layers and adjustments and things we need to know, but not every single tool and option because honestly there are more than we'll ever need. That's just the way Adobe does things is they keep adding more tools and they never take anything out. So let's get started with some of the key functions that we need to know how to use in Photoshop.